सो वेलकम बैक सजी टेनिस दिस विल बी द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन अवर पोर्टल हाई प्रोटेंशन सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कवर अबाउट नॉन सरोटिक पोर्टल हाई प्रोटेंशन एंड वी विल टॉक मोर अबाउट नॉन सरोटिक पोर्टल फाइब्रोसिस और एन सी पी एफ सो फ्रेंड्स द पोर्टल हाई प्रोटेंशन इज अ वेरी पजलिंग सब्जेक्ट इन द माइंड ऑफ यंग ट्रेनिस एंड वी विल ट्राई टू सिंप्लीफाई द होल कंसेप्ट in a step by step manner so that you understand it better i have no disclosures please read the detailed disclaimer in description and in case of any discrepancy please refer to the standard textbooks or standard journals the normal pressure in the portal circulation is between 1 to 4 mm of mercury and if it is more than 5 mm then as the name suggest 5 mm of mercury then as the name suggest it will be portal hypertension this will become clinically significant or relevant if it is more than 10 there is a physiological increase in the portal pressure during coughing after heavy meal or uh, alcohol intake so any condition raising to the uh, intraoral pressure will uh, lead to the increased portal circulation pressure and if there is any disease entity involved leading to the obstruction in this flow then it will be pathological so friends please understand like this portal flow is all the splenic flow which carries the nutrient uh, blood from the intestine and uh, this spirit mesenteric vein combines with the splenic vein to form the portal vein so this whole blood is again entering into the liver that's why it's a portal circulation so uh, one venous blood is basically draining into another capillary capillary network that is the concept of portal circulation so uh, the most common cause of this obstruction will be cirrhosis after alcoholic liver disease when we talk about the non cirrhotic portal hypertension that is no ncph so you have to understand we are talking about two terms one is non cirrhotic portal hypertension and another is non cirrhotic portal fibrosis they are not uh, synonymous they are different so non cirrhotic portal hypertension is when there is a raised in the portal pressure in absence of the cirrhosis so it is a heterogeneous group of disease characterized by rise in portal pressure more than 10 mm of mercury due to intra or prehepatic vascular lesion in the absence of cirrhosis and but uh, and butcheri syndrome in this condition the hepatic venous pressure gradient uh, is less than the portal pressure so there are many new terms and we will keep on discussing adding uh, the insight one by one for the time being you have to just remember these terms or you can write them down for a better understanding so with the help of this uh, diagram which uh, i requested my wife to draw so uh, you understand uh, there is a splenic vein this smb which uh, combined to form the portal vein which divide into right and left portal vein so basically they supply this uh, nutrient rich blood to the liver and then there is a sinusoid then there is a hepatic vein formation so uh, obstruction uh, can be uh, like uh, extra hepatic portal vein obstruction 10% cause it can be pre sinusoidal non cirrhotic the 70% sinusoidal that is cirrhosis 80% causes are because of the, that portal hypertension and alcohol is the most common cause followed by hepatitis b and c virus infection it can be post sinusoidal or post hepatic that will be hepatic venous outlet obstruction so the first two lesions uh, uh, obstructing the confluence of the splenic vein smb splenic mesenteric vein or the portal vein per se that will be extra hepatic portal vein obstruction you have to understand this term said so that in ehpbo extra hepatic portal vein obstruction uh, the obstruction to the flow which lead to the rise in the pressure is extra hepatic before the portal vein enters into the liver so that is the term ehpbo here the uh, portal vein is gone or the smb is gone splenic vein is maybe splenic vein is thrombosed and the blood is draining with the help of multiple collaterals uh, to the liver so again one more term that in the extra hepatic portal vein obstruction there is no inherent or intrinsic abnormality in the liver and the blood flow that is a portal circulation is maintained with the help of collaterals or there is a cavernomatous transformation again this is a new term 
cavernoma formation of the portlamin in extra hepatic portovenous section so the flow is hepatopetal that means uh, despite the obstruction the portal flow is going towards the liver and liver remains healthy another cause of non cirrhotic portal uh, hypertension and cph will be ncpf uh, that we will discuss more uh, in this video so non cirrhotic portal uh, fibrosis ncpf there is obstruction at the level of secondary or tertiary uh, portal radical so obstruction is uh, at the uh, basically small or medium sized portal vein branches so uh, and that lead to the rise in pressure again you have to remember that in this case uh, the sinusoids are perfectly healthy but the portal blood is not draining into the sinusoids and it is getting diverted so uh, again there will be collateral formation which will uh, lead to the uh, portosystemic uh, shunting uh, portosystemic mean the portal blood is getting shunted into the systemic circulation so uh, again uh, uh, another term here the blood flow will be hepatofugal hepatofugal means the portal flow is uh, no uh, is flowing away from the liver and sinusoids are getting deprived of the this portal circulation the most common cause of portal hypertension as i said will be sinusoid cirrhotic uh, liver where there is a inherent fibrosis the liver parenchyma is getting uh, basically replaced with the help of fibrosis because of the uh, insult of the alcohol or other uh, maybe hepatitis b or hepatitis c virus infection so chronic hepatitis so there will be inherent pathology in the liver parenchyma in the ncpf or in the extra hepatic portal vein obstruction the, there was no pathology in the liver parenchyma third cause of this portal obstruction can be the post sinusoidal or the hepatic vein that will be hepatic venous outlet obstruction so like bartchiari syndrome uh, so for the time being just remember these uh, terms and understand the basic concept we will talk more about this so i'll give you a case scenario though so that you can understand the basically uh, how to apply this theoretical knowledge into the uh, practical world or how to implement this knowledge into your uh, clinical cases so the first case uh, which we are discussing with you is this 15 year old boy resident of bihar he noticed the incidental uh, basically swelling or fullness in the left upper quadrant and then he was taken to the family doctor where he was examined uh, followed by ultrasound which suggested there was a, a splenic enlargement further workup uh, in this incidental splenomegaly suggested hypersplenism and he was referred to us so let's clarify what is this hypersplenism so in 1955 demeshek uh, summarized that hypersplenism should be diagnosed in the presence of four condition first is there is moron lineage or multi lineage peripheral cytopenias second is compensatory hyperplasia of the bone marrow and third is splenomegaly and fourth is correction of these abnormalities after splenectomy so uh, you must understand in hypersplenism spleen is enlarged and it is overactive so there is a over destruction of the blood cells that can be rbcs that lead into anemia or platelets that lead into thrombocytopenia or wbc rarely so uh, it can be either one line maybe platelet only maybe wbc but most commonly you will find platelet followed by rbc then wbcs then the bone marrow should be normal so like uh, the bone marrow should be normal and should be hyperactive because of compens compensatory hyperplasia to compensate the loss there should be splenomegaly spleen is enlarged and these things should be corrected after the surgery or or splenectomy so uh, all the these criteria cannot be met because uh, uh, surgery correction will be after surgery only so basically you will see either two or three of these criteria in most of these patients so all these histories in case of uh, these uh, portal hypertension patients are important for my junior trainees so abdominal pain jaundice distension any jaundice indicates 
maybe a episode of hemolysis or there can be a basically liver decompensation abdominal distension to rule out ascites pain that can be cause the infarction or uh, there can be other etiologies history of upper gi bleed hematemesis or melena loss of weight loss of appetite specifically in the child history of infection hospitalization or other comorbidities the general physical examination was normal expect, uh, except for the pallor so aim of sharing these uh, pics is that you understand uh, that you stay as close to the reality as possible so on abdominal examination there was a massive splenomegaly spleen was reaching up to the umbilicus there was another finding of right directing coronal hernia so for my first year trainees a splenic lump is not bimanually palpable that is how you differentiate it from the renal mass and uh, it grows toward the umbilicus and you can feel the splenic notch so always comment about the renal angle fullness that is how you will differentiate it from the renal mass and always comment about the flank veins on examination either in the general physical general physical examination or on the abdominal examination so before coming to us this child has already uh, underwent three times endoscopic abdominal ablation in the peripheral institute so this is the review endoscopy at our center there was evidence of previous evl seen three columns of large baricis seen red clot sign that indicates sinister sign that indicates imminent hemorrhage was there phg fundus body that is portal hypertensive gastropathy hyperemia present in the antrum and d1 d2 showed deutinopathy so uh, there are many new terms for the time being uh, just remember we will clarify each and every term for you for you guys so friends portal hypertensive gastropathy phg is a these are basically the abnormal uh, these uh, Uh, and large channels like in the periesophageal uh, area that is the barrex that is a, it is more or less is a equivalent of the esophageal barrexes so uh, jo, so you understand when we apply the band on the esophageal barrex so these are the abdominal collaterals which are shunting the blood from the liver to the systemic circulation so that is the whole concept of these collaterals of the barrex so when you are occluding one column the another channel will, will become more uh, basically prominent so they worsen after bending of the esophageal barrexes the bleed from the this portal hypertensive gastropathy is very difficult to manage otherwise you can very well manage the esophageal barrex with the help of bandings sclerotherapy or other measures but the portal hypertensive uh, these bleeds are very difficult to manage endoscopically and this is one of the indication for the shunt surgery in these patients so uh, this child had grade 3 barrex grade 1 will be when you can see it in balsalva maneuver only so balsalva maneuver will lead to the prominence of these uh, channels and these can be easily depressed with the help of uh, air pressure grade 2 when they are occupying less than 1/3 the lumen tortuous esophageal barrex are present grade 3 will be when they are occupying more than 1/3 and very close to each other with confident appearance and when these barrex fill the whole human then it will be labeled as a grade 4 uh, barrexes so this is the uh, basically a uh, uh, complete blood count with peripheral blood smear so there was bicytopenia in this patient platelet count of 43000 and wc count were also reduced 3700 only and peripheral blood smear was normal so you have to see for the reticulocyte the peripheral blood smear should so should so uh, the reticulocyte we don't go for the bone marrow biopsy for the purpose of diagnosis if the peripheral blood blood smear is showing the reticulocyte count more so in these cases they will be raised so you can very well uh, assume or correlate that the bone marrow is working fine otherwise you have to go for the bone marrow biopsy but that is not required in a, a practical world another interesting finding in this patient was that bilirubin count was raised that was 4.36 uh, total count so alp was also uh, marginally raised coagulation profile was within normal and the viral markers including the hepatitis b hepatitis c was normal so uh, as i said in these patient uh the uh, basically if you are dealing with a non serotic portal hypertension uh the uh, 
liver function test remains normal so we will discuss more why they are raised but you can very well correlate that in case of hemolysis the unconjugated uh, bilirubin will be raised and there will be some instances where uh, a patient will have a higher uh, hemolysis that can lead to the liver function test uh, abnormal liver function test in the form of raised bilirubin otherwise it denotes decompensation uh, or chronic liver disease so uh, stay tuned uh, the picture will become more clear as the discussion will evolve so i'll read up this uh, cct report there are many things which you should know so right lobar liver is 10.1 cm in a craniocardial span and shows generalized heterogeneous attenuation with mild irregular outline so heterogeneous attenuation irregular outline it indicates the uh, cld or cirrhotic picture there is a relative atrophy of the right lobe with hypertrophy of the left and corded lobe of liver so corded lobe hypertrophy and widening of the fissure of gb fossa hepatic veins are normal no hbrd so again you have to remember this picture is classically of a case of a, a cld chronic liver disease and or this will be you will see in more of patient with cirrhosis but keep in mind that we are dealing with a patient who is 15 year old for cirrhosis to develop like in a cld after alcohol liver disease it takes time generally they uh, those patient will be in their fourth or fifth decade so you have to take this report uh, very very uh, read and analyze this report very very carefully and you have to remember so mp uh, main portal vein is dilated and major 14 mm so prominent dilated portal vein sp axis spleno portal axis dilated patent spinning vein is also dilated and major 11 mm so normal diameter of the portal vein will be around 6 mm 5 uh, 6 mm uh, the spleno vein will be around 4 5 mm only so uh, this prominent vein uh, and along with there there were lower esophageal periportal peripancreatic gastrohepatic perisplenic perigastric location in you know, omentum and mesentery so if we have to analyze this report so we are dealing with some sort of chronic liver disease with portal hypertension by portal hypertension the, there is a uh, prominent uh, dilated portal vein it will dilate because of the more pressure and they are more so they are the collaterals present which indicate the porto systemic shunting so uh, we are dealing with cld with hypertrophy of the corded lobe and there is a portal hypertension so this was the impression in this child that was chronic liver parenchymal disease with portal hypertension ignore the uh, lipidinopathy so uh, these are the basically ct scan pics and uh, friends uh, they are very classical the liver is irregular left lobe uh, hypertrophy widening of the uh, fissure between the right and left lobe that is segment 2 3 and uh, basically Uh, segment four, not left and right lobe. So segment two, three, and four fissure is widened, and uh, there is a hypertrophy of the corded lobe. So we will discuss more. So this is the uh, basically uh, labeling which I have done for you. Here you can see the right and left portal vein. So there is a patent portal vein. you can see uh, it is going down up to the pancreas, and uh, there is spinning vein joining the uh, SMB. and if you keep seeing these cuts then you can very well imagine this is a binding of the fissure the corded lobe is hypertrophied so uh, between the portal vein and the ivc will be the corded lobe you remember uh, these terms you can pause this video here and i um, mean remember this picture in your mind and the spleen is enlarged why spleen is enlarged so you can very well see in the last cut in the lower panel so even after the last cut uh, the liver is uh, no more liver we cannot see the liver but the spleen is still visible so if after the last cut of liver if you can see the spleen then you are dealing with a case of splenomegaly so here it is massively enlarged so we are dealing with a massive splenomegaly so this picture is very classical for the uh, cirrhosis so that all the features are suggestive of uh, this radiological feature of cirrhosis but at this age as i said cirrhosis is unlikely until unless we are dealing with a metabolic liver disease which is not the scenario in this patient so i'm quite sure that uh, uh, all of you are dealing with these kind of patient during your opd uh, visits so uh, but it is your diagnosis and plan so we will discuss uh, the diagnosis and uh, the surgical management we did in this patient at the end of this video
with that we have reached the end of this video i hope uh, we were able to uh, basically clarify some uh, basic concept in your mind and we will upload soon so stay tuned for a better learning experience and for exclusive early access to the premium sd content please download our app or join the uh, youtube channel membership the link for everything is given in description of this video so thanks for watching friends uh, do like the content subscribe to our channel share with your friends and hit the bell icon for all the future updates if you are watching it on our uh, youtube channel and uh, i'll see you soon so happy learning thank you very much